I still don't feel like I'm working I, because I'm doing what I like. All right, let's go. My name is Raphael Braune. I am one of the founders of Supremo Coffee and Comalante Grinder. I've been working in specialty coffee since about 2005 and uh, love coffee. <laughs> In the beginning, I just wanted to help uh, my family to set up the small roastery and give it a look, basically. The face, the package, the website. And, but it was, it was so much fun and it, it's, it's really in something honest. You can, if, if I tell somebody, um, I bought this coffee from that farm and it tastes like this and that, and uh, the farmer gets good money for it. It's true. Um, that's how we do it. And, and that just gives so much joy to to me and that I decided to stay with coffee. So we started really, really, really small. We were lucky to get a contract from a guy who had a huge hall and we asked him whether it would be possible to just have a little slice of that hall and he said, you know what, uh, in two years we will tear it down anyways, um, go for it. So you have to imagine this huge empty space and then there was um, a small five kilo roaster and there were some coffee bags. Uh, we were sitting there and, and printing the labels, cutting out the labels, filling each bag on a little scale by hand. And it was an exciting time. Then in 2007, we had to leave the building because they took it down and we moved into this building. And one of the first things that we want to do is uh, make sure that there are enough steps that can ensure quality. And so we started looking into how to store coffee properly so that it doesn't age that fast. And then moving in here, we built that humidor that we're sitting in right now. So we are at our raw coffee bean humidor, which means it's a, our storage for all the green beans. Um, it's climate controlled, means always the same temperature, same moisture content and some other interesting levels to keep the um, coffee fresh as long as possible so that if the new harvest comes in uh, there's not a big jump in quality. So we try to keep it just as fresh as possible over the whole year. We wanted to have the biggest variety and the best quality. That was the aim. Right now we have about 130 different kinds of coffee here, different lots from all kinds of coffee countries. And we just wanted to show that you don't need syrups or all that, you just need different beans, different roast profiles to get an awesome cup of coffee and to have something exciting in the cup. Then take that package and make it approachable to anyone. Um, that they can find their way towards quality. If somebody walks into the door, they made the decision not to go to the supermarket and buy a cheap coffee. And so we have to give them something. And that something should be really a, a nice customer service. They usually are, people are overwhelmed when you walk in the store and like, oh, you have so many different kinds of coffee, which one's the right one for me? And that's actually what we want. We want that conversation with our customers that we can find out, okay, what do you like? Where, where are you taste wise? And then we can help them to find his coffee. What we said is whenever a human person can make the product better, we do it by hand. So if it's better to roast coffee by hand, we'll roast it by hand. If there could be a system that guarantees a better quality in, for instance, like that storage room, um, we want to do that. If there's anything that can help us to get better, we want to apply that and, and learn from the big guys, but do it in a smaller scale and a higher quality. And uh, that's why quality control is super important. That's why every roast that we do, we, we check in, in our tiny lab. And I want our customers to be sure that if something is not going right, it's not the coffee. So what we had to learn over the years, you have to first set up a network. And it has to be a network of trust and, and um, it has to be transparent and, and 
it takes a while to set something up and you cannot really start and, and with doing 100% direct trade. Depends on what you think that direct trade is. For us, after 13, 14 years of having the rosary now, um, we cannot do 100% direct trade. We, we could, but then we would have less diversity. For me, I can only call it direct if I really, if I pay the money to him or if I can talk to him and know exactly how much is he getting. And um, it's okay if somebody who helps us with logistics gets a fee. That's perfectly fine because he's doing a job. But I want to know how much a farmer is getting. Second part to that direct trade, what we found out is that very often the farms that produce great coffees, they're families. And we, ourselves, we are family. And if you do business with that mindset that you want to have something stable that will also be good for the next generation, um, you have a different approach as somebody who just wants to make money fast. This one back here, Sitcher by Shadow. They're such a nice family, super humble, um, great people. We've been uh, visiting their farm many times. Uh, they won Cup of Excellence twice in a row, first place with the highest score ever. Somebody creates a great coffee and puts in all the effort to um, really get a perfect cup of coffee, then I'm happy to pay more money for that. Then I can also sell it better. And that's the, the approach. If, if I have a great coffee, it's easier to sell. If it's from a nice family, there's a story, that's what customers like. Um, and that's our approach on how we buy coffee. The, the nice thing about growing in specialty coffee, um, as you grow, growing is not bad. You have a bigger impact on the farmers. If I'm able to buy more specialty coffee and, and not just picking little lots, I still pick little lots because I love little lots, but I can also buy some volume from the farmers and that way it gives them stability in their lives and quality by that. And um, that empowers them to be more creative and to do more. We've been traveling to Origin for many years now and, and we've seen many farms and many approaches and as a roaster, you don't want to tell a farmer what to do. It, it would be, because they it's their farm, they've been doing it for years. But sometimes you have this feeling like, okay, it would be really nice in, in that area to plant this or that kind of coffee. Or to maybe, if you're not dependent on the volume, you can focus on the detail of growing great coffee. So, so we had the opportunity to buy some land in Costa Rica, Tarazu area and had the opportunity through our friends um, to get some nice seeds of some varieties. And the goal is just have that from seed to cup all in our hands at one aspect and through that you can learn again. The thing is with me and my dad or my family is more whenever it kind of things settle down and you're like oh it runs smoothly now somebody comes up with a new project or a new idea like it wouldn't it be great like with commandant or with the farm now and just striving for something new something that we can can do and in a way you could say we're a bit restless but in a positive way and we try to uh, take that energy and, and you know do something great <laughs>